Welcome, Dan Williams, Survive Outdoors. Today we're doing bites, stings, and rashes. Things that you might encounter in the outdoors. Now what got me started on this video is I had a lady that was went to travel in the North Woods and she came in with this rash. And I immediately got to thinking about what is causing this in the outdoors. And then I realized she didn't have a histamine reaction. So we're gonna show you some wasp stings some rashes, chiggers, a bunch of stuff. So stay tuned, here we go. If something bites you, stings you, or you come in contact with a plant that's gonna cause a dermatitis, you're gonna, it's gonna get red, it's gonna itch, it can be warm, and those are the criteria of a histamine reaction. So this lady was in the north woods of Wisconsin, comes back with this rash, I'm immediately thinking it has to be an outdoor rash. Not at all. The rash you're about to see is actually something called Molluscum contagiosum. It's a virus from the pox, P-O-X virus. It can last for weeks, up to months, really no treatment, and it goes away. But that's how a history of someone telling you what they did previously to this rash can get you a little confused. It did not itch, it really wasn't warm, and it was not a plant dermatitis. Next, you're going to see uh, two different types of Lyme disease rashes, erythema migrans. One has the classic red dot in the middle, the other one does not. Both had positive Lyme blood tests. And that is my arm with a tiny little uh, Lone Star tick male embedded in my arm. And nope, I didn't get any illnesses, but it's just a nice little example to show you that these ticks do not go out under your skin totally. It's just barely under the, um, the epidermis, just the head of the tick. <clears throat> chiggers. In this photograph, this is what Chiggers does. It has these little red almost cherry red reactions that you see and they're notoriously on the legs, calves, ankles, feet. If you lay down in the grass then you'll start seeing them in other places of the body. But itch like hell. Those are chiggers. This next rash is a just these little blisters you'll see on the arm and this is a photodermatitis that the sap from the plant gets on your skin and then is activated with UV light from the sun, causing these blisters. It can be painful, uh, it can itch. The main plants in the Midwest that are responsible for this are hogweed, cow parsnip, and wild parsnip. The hogweed can be confused with Queen Anne's lace. The difference is, is Queen Anne's lace will have one round umbel, U-M-B-E-L, I'll post that, whereas hogweed and cow parsnip have many little umbels, and they're usually um, white, whereas wild parsnip has a yellow flower, and as in the picture you're about to see. The difference between hogweed and cow parsnip is that the hogweed plant, the stem, has red dots or red uh, areas on the stem. Hogweed is really much more toxic than cow parsnip. All of these be very, very cautious with if you see them in the outdoors. Hogweed is massive. It'll grow eight to 10 feet tall. The next rash is actually shingles, but it's red. It can itch and it can burn big time. And it often gets confused for poison ivy. The thing about shingles, which is herpes zoster, it's one of the only truisms in medicine that it's only on one side of the body. So that is shingles. And I put that up there so you can see the similarity to poison ivy. These next two rashes are poison ivy. You get the raised uh, little bumps on a red base and many times they weep. You also have streaking. Um, and you'll look at those, compare that to the shingles. There's some similarities, but not much when you really give it a close look. I really recommend going to our poison ivy video and checking that out in terms of treatment. 
The next is a yellow jacket sting, and you'll see on the base of her forearm, she has this huge wheel, and that is a classic uh, bee sting, wasp sting reaction, and you'll see it's down in here, and check out the photo, it's red, little puppy. Next photo on the back of the neck by the hairline, now those are scratch, it's in a different stage, but those are midges, flying midges bites on the back of her little girl's neck and she scratched the dickens out of them and she has these little red excoriations on the back of her neck. Flying midges are a very, very tiny fly. They bite and suck blood. Um, they're usually only around for about three to four weeks in early to late spring. Hope these photographs give you some idea of what to expect if you encounter. I think one of the best way, ways to teach is show you a photograph, show you what the causative agent is, and then you'll know. Uh, poison oak, poison sumac looks identical to poison ivy. So that rash is similar to all three plants. Any questions, comments, suggestions, put them down in the comments. It'd be great. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe. See you next time. Keep your eyes on the horizon, your face to the wind.